Hi everyone and welcome to another Civilization 7 talk video of sorts. So I figured I'll continue these talks because I'm sure many of you are interested. I know many of you are interested. And uh, well, I just want to talk about Civilization 7, man. <laughs> we waited eight years for the next iteration of Civilization. And while it will be some time before we're able to play it, there's already a lot to talk about. And I can't possibly talk about everything that I want to talk about in a single video. I wouldn't want to do it in a single video. So I'm just going to continue making regular videos talking about some specific topics. And we'll discuss new information as it becomes available. I believe there's actually another gameplay stream by Firaxis on the 31st of August. Either 30th or 31st, I would have to double check right now. But there is another one scheduled already. So we'll have new information soon enough. Anyway, in this video, I actually wanted to discuss this screen right here. I noticed this in the gameplay that's currently available. It's pretty limited because all over the gameplay anyone is posting right now is the gameplay footage that's been provided by 2K and Firaxis. And uh, from what I've seen, well, pretty much everyone I watched so far, which is not everyone because I didn't have the time, but everyone I did watch pretty much just glossed over this screen. They had it for like two or three seconds. But I see a lot of things in here that are pretty interesting relating to victory conditions. This is the victory screen. However, as far as I'm aware right now, Nobody actually knows all of the information about the actual victory conditions. Nobody actually knows all of the details. This right here is the victory screen. However, this seems to be just for the first age, the ancient era or whatever. And remember, Civilization 7 only has three ages. In comparison, Civilization 6 has nine if we also count future era. So one era in Civilization 7 is going to be a rough equivalent of three in Civilization 6. So with that in mind, I find some of the numbers here to be pretty interesting. The fact that one of the goals is to have 12 towns or cities in your empire, and more importantly, conquered settlements will count as two. So this might indicate a few things. One is that it might be harder in a Civilization 7 to actually conquer somebody's city, which is definitely a possibility. But also that the game will reward aggressive domination playstyle quite a bit when a conquered settlement will count as two. So it might be harder to take somebody's city compared to previous Civilization games. However, once you actually manage to do that, you will be, in a sense, more like rewarded than you would be previously. Because not only you took the city, now you have two settlements that count towards this goal right here. I also find some of these other numbers to be pretty interesting, particularly the World Wonder one. So, house seven world wonders in your empire. Again, house, not build. You don't have to build them yourself. You can capture them from the enemies. Which, again, makes the aggressive domination playstyle potentially more rewarding than maybe it's been in the past. This doesn't necessarily have to be the case. However, in a way, this does reward aggressive domination playstyle. And think about this number. So, considering that one era, one age in Civilization 7 is a rough equivalent of three eras in Civilization 6, maybe two and a half, like a little bit more than two and a half if we exclude the future age. So, somewhere between two and a half and three, which is quite a significant chunk of the game. So, it's building seven wonders a lot. If you take, for example, the ancient era, the classical era, and the medieval doesn't have to be all of medieval. Is seven a lot to build in that time span? It's not a huge number. You do have to actually actively try to build seven wonders in that time span. And you have to balance that with like actually building up your empire. 
but it's not some massive number. It's a reasonable number to achieve, especially again if you manage to take one or two from your enemy. So uh, that's interesting. Also, have 12 towns or cities. So that means that you will be very much actively rewarded if you have a total of 12 towns or cities in the first era. Is 12 a lot? In the context of previous civilization games, I would say that is quite a lot. If you have 12 cities by the end of medieval era especially, because again, this is the first age. We don't know if the milestones for the second age will be the same or similar, they might be completely different. We don't know really anything about that. So this is a pretty interesting milestone. You can reasonably achieve 12 cities, especially when the conquered ones count as two, but let's say you play completely peacefully. 12 in the first three ages like is a pretty big number, but it's a reasonable number to achieve. Also, I confirmed this with at least one person uh, who actually had the chance to play for a few hours. There is no actual hard cap on the settlements. This was something I was really worried about when I saw like plus one settlement limit and such in some of the gameplay footage we've seen. But I confirmed with at least one person who had a chance to play that the cap is more of a soft cap. It's actually a pretty soft kind of cap. It's definitely not a hard cap. So it's not that you will only be able to build, let's say, four cities until you unlock plus one from some kind of research or something else, and then you can build another one. That's not it. Fortunately, I'm really glad that that's not it. With that said, from what I heard, again, from people I talk with, because, you know, us civilization people on YouTube and Twitch, we actually talk with each other. <laughs> In case you had any dubs, a lot of us actually talk with each other. So, you know. Anyway, I was going to say, from what I heard so far, Civilization 7 leans more towards tall playstyle than wide, which kind of makes sense in the context of unstacked cities. I mean, the cities have been unstacked significantly in Civ 7, so it kind of makes sense it would be challenging to go super tall. However, there are not just cities, but also towns. There's the concept of a town. When you first settle with a settler, you don't create an actual city, you create a town that you do not have actual full direct control over. It's something other 4X games have done in the past. Anyway, but I just wanted to discuss this briefly. There's also another thing which I saw uh, on the official page. Actually, let me show you for a second. This thing right here. Now, this is mentioned specifically in the context of online play. Up to five players supported in the Antiquity and Exploration Ages. Up to eight players supported in uh, the Modern Age. But I'm a little bit unclear about whether you will be able to play a single-player game right from the start with more than five players. I had some contradicting information about that, but at least one person I talked with told me that, as far as he knows, you will actually not be able to start a game in the Ancient Era or whatever it's called with more than five players. This might be because they won't have more than five civilizations available initially in ancient age. Like, we don't actually know that part. But to me, like, this is a little bit unclear. So I thought that that's kind of interesting. I did hear people mention uh, that it seems like Civilization 7's games will be a little bit smaller scale compared to previous Civs. However, this might or might not actually be the case. One thing I don't know is that the map expands as the game progresses, which is a pretty interesting mechanic that immediately made me think about how this would affect the true start location Earth map. Because that's something that's always been immensely popular in Civilization games. And from what I heard so far, it sounds like when you progress to the next age, the map would expand to include, let's say, North and South America, 
and then some new player actually starts there, presumably an AI player. But we don't actually know this. Nobody has actually been able to play beyond the ancient age. Any people who had the opportunity to play only played for three hours, and they only played a vertical slice of the game, which only included the first age. So nobody actually knows for sure what's going to happen beyond the first age. And the, the developers have been keeping a lot of the details about what happens further in the game under wraps, at least for now. But either way, I didn't want to make this video super long. I just wanted to bring your attention to this age progress victor screen, because I thought some of these numbers in here had interesting implications. Also the 25 resources one. So this might actually indicate some kind of economic victory. There is some information in the gameplay footage available so far that potentially indicates some kind of economic victory. There has been a lot of speculation that there will actually be some kind of economic victory in Civilization 7. So this could have something to do uh, with controlling some number of resources. I doubt it's going to be just have X number of gold or X number of income, because that would be incredibly easy to cheese. But I could see it being maybe sort of an equivalent of monopolies in the Civilization 6, for example, except that you don't need to have just a monopoly on a resource or two, you need to have maybe a monopoly on the majority of them. Maybe some percentage of all the controllable resources on the map. But again, that's just my speculation. That's pure speculation on my part. However, this does mean that, in a sense, you will be directly rewarded and encouraged to control duplicates of the same resource. The only real reason in the past to have duplicates of the same resource was to sell them to the AI. And once you run out of the AIs to sell them to, it was basically pointless. I'm playing a game right now, as I'm recording this, where I have like eight or nine copies of salt, because I get the duplicates for a unique building, and doesn't matter. But I have more copies of salt than there are players in the game, and the extra copies are completely useless. Like, they don't serve any purpose, I have no incentive to even try to keep them, I get no benefit from them other than yields from the tile, but like th there's no real reason to have them, there's no benefit. But here it sounds like even if you run out of people to trade that resource to, you will potentially have a reason to hoard the resources. So again, I thought that was interesting. What do you think about this screen and the potential implications of it? I'm curious about your thoughts. I might also grab some people, maybe like one or two people, just to bounce some ideas with, and maybe like we will have some different thoughts. But I have no concrete plans just yet. Either way, uh, thanks for watching uh, all the way to the end, I appreciate it, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.